Right, so I've got the Beretta APX here. The six round magazine and the eight round magazine is loaded. And we're gonna see how the performance is. Normally I try to test with steel case too, but they don't allow steel case here, which is fine. So I'm gonna be using cellular and bellet and some CCI training mat or training ammunition. Here's the first shots. get this magazine to go into the fire alarm. Took one round out and it let it load. I didn't count, but it looks like I was able to fit seven in here, and that's why I would not insert into the firearm. So, the more you know. Let's try the eight round magazine. Failure to uh, feed. Now I just racked it back and it fed right in. Um, this is with the cellular and Bella ammo, so that's one failure. Um, it might need to break in, but it's not good. I normally don't have problems like that, so we'll see. Thumb getting a little bit easier. No failures out of the six yet. All right, I got two little round targets at about seven yards. I'm gonna shoot the six rounder at the top right one and the eight rounder at the top bottom left. I'm gonna try this one because this is the one I had a failure last time. Let's see how it does. Didn't fully go into battery. Yeah. That was in the bottom left. I'll bring it closer. Once I've done the six rounder.
we can see that one down below is the eight rounder which I went low and left that would be my finger causing that and then the six rounder I went one low and the rest were on the circle I definitely got some improvement to make back at five yards and see how it does Got three more cellular and bellet in this one, and then we're switching over to the CCI for the rest of it. Alright, so just now leaving the range and uh, yeah, had a failure with the 8 round magazine. It looked like uh, the first time I shot the 8 round magazine, I had a failure to feed. Um, the racking thing was me um, being too, too gentle with it. So once I started uh, like slingshotting it, I guess is the proper term, everything fed fine and no issues, but... The failure to feed was definitely, uh, I don't know, it's, it could be a break-in process. I'll have to take it up here a few more times. I didn't get a test it with steel case either, but I mean, that's rounded ammo. That's not concealed carry ammo and I had a failure to feed. So, I mean, that always is a little concerning, but it could be nothing. I did oil it before I brought it up here. So it shouldn't have been like, you know, It shouldn't have, sorry, had to pull out here. It shouldn't have been an issue of like, you know, not chambering smoothly or anything like that because I've sat there and by hand, you know, racked it a ton and used that laser training round on it. And I always kind of do that with new pistols to try to kind of help the break in process a little bit. But yeah, so I guess uh, my feelings on it so far, just like any handgun that's really compact like that, I mean, it. It's got a little bit, not a ton of kick, but I mean a little bit of kick. Uh, the stippling, being aggressive like it is, it helped me keep my hand on it pretty pretty well. I only caught myself 
readjusting a couple times, which were after my hands got sweaty. Um, I wore a hoodie, which it was way too warm in there for me to be wearing a hoodie. I was expecting the temperatures to be colder today, and they were not. So, bad choice on my part. That probably contributed a huge factor to it. Was just I was hot as crap in there. But I mean, yeah, it feels pretty good. A little, like I said, a little concerning on the failure, but things like that I suppose can happen. I'm just not used to it. With, uh, for instance, a, a name as big as Beretta, any of my other pistols, you know, even my Tauruses. I didn't really have that issue unless I started introducing aftermarket magazines and stuff like that. And yeah, so it might just be something as simple as a break-in period. Probably not so much recommended that I wouldn't personally carry this right now until I've like, you know, really put some rounds through it and know that it's going to work every time. But I mean, it's accuracy was pretty good. Um, I noticed myself having to raise the front sight up just a tad bit when firing to hit where I wanted to be. If I line them all up evenly, I was low. To the left is, uh, you know, that's that's me. But on the ones that weren't low and left, I was lower than I expected to be at five and seven yards. So that will be once plates are readily available, you know, that'll clear up that with a red dot. You know, you can adjust accordingly for that. I definitely like it, but I wouldn't say I'm impressed. For the price, I mean, I paid $400, $399. Um, I don't know if that's an escalated rate or if that's where about what it should be. Um, but for $400, I just... I guess I expected a little bit more. I don't know. It's not that it didn't do anything the way it should have, besides that one failure to feed with the eight rounder. It just, not exactly what I was expecting, I suppose. I feel like the Springfield XDS Mod 2 that I had was a better firearm in my opinion, and the fact that I could attach my Romeo Zero directly to it was a huge plus. But, you know, it's a different handgun I haven't gotten. I only put, you know, 150 rounds through it because most of the ammo that I brought was steel case and I couldn't use it. So, but yeah, out of the 150 I shot, I had one failure at the very beginning and then no more besides the having to slam on the back. But that was user error. That was not the handgun's fault. So that is not to be held against them. But... So my overall opinion of it, should you buy one? If you're wanting one, yeah. I didn't have any light primer strikes or anything like that. If you're buying one to have an optic ready pistol, you might want to hold off. The plates are not available. I asked uh, their store associates if they've heard anything about it and they looked it up and they're like, they're just not available yet as far as they can tell. So if you're looking for an optic ready pistol, probably not the one to get right now just because they launched it before they had the plates. But if you're just looking for a nice, small concealed carry, it's not a bad gun. Um, it's priced about, about average for that. I think my XDS Mod 2 was around the same price, if not a little bit more. But I would personally probably go with the XDS Mod 2 over, over the Beretta APX A1 carry. That's just my thoughts. Doesn't mean I'm right. That's just my opinion. Everybody has one. So I hope you guys found this video enjoyable and you learned a little bit from it. If you would, hit this video with a like. Subscribe to the channel. We've got a lot more stuff to come. Um, I know it's been a while since I've been filming. This range isn't super far away, so I can go by there once in a while and their pricing was good. They don't mind me using my little adhesive targets, which saves me a ton of money because if I've just got to buy paper targets constantly you know that doubles the price of the range so yeah a lot more to come i definitely hopefully am going to be getting the gx4 toro soon and i really still want a p365 and i keep not buying it because i'm like you know it's nothing new it's not exciting for the channel it's just something i want i really 
really like that pistol. Every time I've used one, I've really liked it. So I think I'm just going to end up buying one. And if nobody watches the videos, they don't watch the videos. I'm also going to be making a, a video about guns that I regret buying. Not necessarily regret, but they did not draw as much interest as I thought they would or they didn't perform the way I thought I, they would. So that's going to be probably the next video I make is, you know, over the pistols that I bought over the past year and a half, which ones I, I liked and which ones weren't all that great. So yeah, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'll talk to you all next time.